So today I'm going to be doing a research presentation on Rakugo, also known as Japanese sit-down comedy. Now, first we have to look at some theatre in context. Uh, the Rakugo really came about as a fully fledged art form during the Tokugawa Shogunate era, also known as the Edo period. Now, the Tokugawa period saw a period of extended peace, political stability, and economic growth under the Shogunate founded by Tokugawa Ieyasu, which I think is how that's pronounced. Don't hold me to that. Um, the reason for this uh, expanded growth was because during the um, over 250 year long reign of the Tokugawa Shogunate, there was a lock on movement between classes. No one could move between any of the four classes from peasant to warrior to uh, samurai or to the ruling class. Because of this, it meant that the incredibly large peasant population was left as peasants. They would stay as peasants, they would constantly be farming, producing food for the entire Japan, meaning that they, there was a greater surplus of food for the people, meaning there'd be a population increase and a general rise in everything, from the, the economic growth to the physical stability, and the reason that it's also known as the Edo period is because the Tokugawa Shogunate ruled from Edo Castle, which is modern day Tokyo. Um, the, during this, uh, the rule of this Shogunate, the national economy expanded rapidly, as I said, because of this effect of having a growing population in Japan. They were able to focus their the surplus food so they could divert their attention to other things, such as increasing in industry and um, imports, exports, trade. And this, this led to emergence of a well-to-do merchant class, which brought with it a dynamic urban culture that found expression in new literary, literary and art forms, which led to an expansion of um, the arts through music and theatre and writing, um, very, very similar to the Italian Renaissance that happened during, I believe, the 1600s. Um, and now, Rakugo started a long time before uh, the Tokugawa Shogunate came about, but it wasn't in the form that we know it as today. It, the uh, Rakugo finds its origins in Buddhist sermons, whereas uh, Noriko Watanabe from Barak University says the earliest Rakugo cards, which were, is the name for the Rakugo storytellers, parodied the allegorical stories that were used in preachings. In order for the, um, because Buddhism was the, as I believe still is, the dominant religion in Japan, the uh, Buddhist monks who were delivering these sermons would have to find a way to keep the uh, peasants who were coming to their sermons occupied, keep them interested in the sermons they were giving. So they turned them into stories, turned them into funny allegorical stories that people would remember and therefore pay more attention to. And they were not originally written down, rather they were passed down through word of mouth and people would tell stories of the sermons, people would go home and tell stories to their friends, like, hey, this is a really funny story I heard uh, Buddhist church today, at the temple today, I'm not sure quite what they're called. And it wasn't until a um, point in the 11th century where Uji Shui Monogatari uh, collected a, a large amount of traditional Rukugo stories and wrote them all down. Um, and as uh, said by Laurie Brow in Rukugo Performing Comedy and Cultural Heritage in Contemporary Tokyo, many of these found their way into collections of setsua, short tales and legends on a variety of themes, often with religious or humorous content. And these uh, setsuas were predominantly either written by or the content for these setsuas were delivered by uh, Monogatari. Now, during the Edo period, Rakugo gained popularity as a legitimate form of art, uh, whereas before it had been entirely um, either in Buddhist sermons or as a type of street performance, much like the earlier. Um, I, as I said, during the Renaissance period, you had the birth of Camino dell'Arte, uh, which started as street performance. But during the Edo period, it became established uh, the literature form of art moved from just street performance to taking place in theatres. And this all came about as, this, as a result of this growth in wealth and prosperity in Japan caused by Tsungara Shogunate. Now, when it comes to performing Rakugo, there are a lot of things to take into consideration. It's called sit down comedy for a reason. The Rakugo car, as said by Katsura Sunshine, Rakugo features a lone storyteller dressed in a kimono, as you can see here, kneeling on a cushion who, using only a fan and a hand towel for props, entertains the audience with comic monologue, followed by a traditional story. Now, as you can see from this picture here, we have a traditional Rakugo car, uh, 
uh, the image isn't the clearest, but you can see here he has his fan, which he's currently using the prop. He is kneeling on the stage, in, clad in the kimono, on the cushion, because the Kuga cast would be kneeling for at least, like in some cases, at least an hour, possibly more, and they needed a cushion to stop their knees from uh, never working again after you know, a couple of months' work. And here, what it looks like is the way he's holding the fan is he's using it as a oar on a boat, which works quite well with the sort of position uh, Rukuka is sat in. It looks like he's just rowing himself down a river here. And you can see also he's got a uh, face reflected in here. Because you're very limited in how much you can move in Rukuka, you can't walk around the stage, you can't um, do anything with your legs or move your body as outside of the sitting position. A lot of the acting from Rukuka comes from your upper body and your face, face acting. Now, for when it comes to crazy, oh, um, sorry. Um, now, when it comes to Rukuka Go, there is a three-part structure to these monologues, to these jokes of like West, the West referring to. Uh, the monologue has a three-part structure consisting of the makura, the preliminary comments, a honmon, the main body, and the oki, the wind-up, also known as the sage. These are narrated in order of focus on humour. Now. To us, we would um, most be able to identify the Oki part of the structure. The Oki is what we would call the punchline, or um, sort of the end of the joke with the um, Honmon and the Makura being the build-up and the setting up of the joke and the punchline. Now, Rukugo itself literally means falling word, which is the Japanese word of punchline. Now, when it comes to uh, creating props, the Rukugo car is very limited to what it can use to create props, it only has um, the hand towel and the fan, but there is a lot that a recruiter car can do with just these two props. They're trained for years with, um, there is in fact only one recruiter car outside of Japan itself, which is Kasura Sunshine, who I um, had a quote from earlier, because there's such an intensive training to be able to know exactly uh, what to do to make certain props and how to make convincing stories with such a limited amount of resources at your disposal. And as uh, Jessica Milner Davis writes in Understanding Humor in Japan, these items help him express and act out the story. For example, the fan could be chopsticks, scissors, cigarettes, or a pipe. The towel could be a book, handkerchief, bills, or banknotes. I'm going to show you now, sort of the, there's also a, a couple of other examples here that you can see. I'm going to show you how a good card would create these props uh, on stage. Now, the chopsticks is a fairly simple one. You, um, what I would, uh, thought when seeing this was you'd hold the fan like you would chopsticks. You'd hold it with, you'd open it slightly to allow for the gap between the two different chopsticks. You'd balance one on your middle finger and then rest the other on your inner finger. There you have a almost, I should hook it uh, closer so it can be seen, you have an almost chopstick-like motion. Now, I'm not trained in Rukugo at all, so I can't really, and yeah, this uh, is only something I've worked out recently, but this is the basic idea, as you can see here, to how a Rukugo would create chopsticks. Scissors is a very similar kind of thing, it's the idea of creating this sort of um, gap here, and then if you had like sort of really big scissors, using like that, and also double as some kind of like animal's mouth eating like that. Um, Cigarettes or a pipe, very similar objects, which would be used uh, very similar actions like the chopstick and the scissors, where one would hold the um, hat, the fan in a manner that resembles holding a cigarette or pipe. So for a pipe, you'd hold it at the bottom and put it your mouth like this. Like so, and then the cigarette you would hold like that or like that, depending on however you prefer to hold your cigarettes. Uh, when it comes to the towel, the towel is probably one of the more um, Versatile of the two objects, well, one of the more versatile, in my opinion, of the two objects, because with the um, the uh, fan, you are limited to the space of it. That's the, as far as it can extend. It's a very rigid object, so you are limited to this arc of movement, and not a child. It's very fixed length, and outside of its parameters, you can't do much. Where the hand towel. The hand towel, as it is a piece of cloth, is a much more versatile, you can do much more with it. So here it says uh, it could be a book, 
So if you were to fold the hand towel as so, it creates an image almost like a small book. You wouldn't be able to make a big book out of this because as it is fabric, uh, it doesn't have the best tension in it. So if I were to hold it like this, it would fall. So what I decided to do would be to hold the, uh, to fold it a few more times to create a more rigid structure than it, so then I could hold it like so and have a book-like structure to it. Um, handkerchief is a very self-explanatory one because this is um, essentially a handkerchief uh, same design, but you'd also have to make it clear to the audience that what you're using it for now is not something, it, would, it wouldn't be a book anymore, it would be a handkerchief, so then you'd have to bring in your own actions as an actor to back up what you're trying to portray with the hand towel. So while the hand towel looks like a napkin, because it's used for so many other things, you have to make clear to the audience what it is that you're intending to be now. So if, if it was a handkerchief, I'd have to use it as a handkerchief. So for example, blowing my nose, like so, or crying for a uh, character that's sad, crying, wiping my eyes with it. Um, there are also some bank notes. It involves, once again, turning the book, folding it up tightly to create a, a more torn feel to it, and also making it thinner. So if I were to fold it like so, it creates a much tighter, neater fold that is much more rigid. So it'd be gestured, at, you can use it to gesture like you're offering money to someone, like so. Or if it's bills, if you fold it to look somewhat like a envelope, I would fold it like so, it has the appearance of a rather large envelope. And it can also make several other things. So a notebook has a similar appearance to the book, just smaller. So if it's like a policeman's notebook, for example, or a reporter's notebook, you would fold the um, so you'd fold the uh, hand towel into a thinner shape and then fold it in half like so and then you are able to flick open the notebook and then if you were then to use your um, fan alongside it you would then have a pencil or a pen to write with so you can flip open your notebook and write down notes um, it can also be used as a baton, so if you're being a policeman here, you've got, if you're being a policeman, you have your notebook to write down things and suddenly the person you're talking to starts, get, starts attacking you, then have a baton to then you know, beat the person with. Uh, we've covered pencil, pen, we're using it as a notebook, and we've also, you are also able to use the um, ability to extend the fan to make it appear as a steering wheel, like so. So if you open the fan all the way, so you then have the top of the steering wheel. So you can be driving like so. Um, <clears throat> oh, uh, I'm now going to perform a, um, well not a traditional Rakugo story, it is a um, western joke. But I'll be using um, specifically these objects that I um, showed you how I create for in this joke. So, uh, in traditional Rukuga style, I am kneeling on a raised stage and I have my hand towel and my fan. So, one day, a man was driving along the motorway, rather fast, he was speeding in fact, and a policeman saw this and drove up next to him and pulled him over. And he got out of the car and he said, Hero who is the dope said, Sir, did you know how fast you were going then? The man in the car was like, uh, very fast. It's like, sir, I'm afraid I have to take you. Oh, no, no, you, uh, I, you see, I was driving away. I was driving away to escape a robbery. And the policeman is shocked by this. You mean, you weren't just speeding, sir, but you were also, you'd also just committed a robbery. So I'm going to have to ask you to step out of the car. And I said, oh, no, 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 I can't. I, I can't, I can't come out of the car. Uh, sorry. And then the policeman goes, all right, that's it, sir, sir I'm taking you in. He draws his bat on and starts reaching into the car to try and <laughs> to try and uh, pull the man out. And gets his baton ready to press him if need be. And the man said, "Oh no, no! If you do that, you'll find the gun I have in the glove compartment." So the officer says, "Oh, no! I need to call for backup." So he gets his radio. He goes, "I need backup here on the scene now." And then a few minutes later, there's helicopters and policemen everywhere. And the police chief comes over to the man and says, Sir, we're told by this officer that you have, been, you were, uh, you have a gun, you committed a robbery, and, you was, and we have to take you in. I'm sorry, sir. And the man goes, Well, have you checked? Have you checked on what this man said? 
Well, no. So they check the car and they find no gun. There's no evidence of a robbery being committed. And the police says, oh, sir, oh, sorry, sir, it appears uh, we're wrong. There's, there's no evidence of any of these things being said. I'm like, oh, yeah, guy's such a liar. And I bet he told you I was speeding, too. And I've gone over time now, haven't I? Yeah, but you might as well finish it. Yeah. Because uh, then we can... Yeah. I'll tell you whether the end's any good, and then we can decide to cut yeah. stuff in the middle. So, um, I, already talked, though, Josh. Yeah. I already talked a bit about Comedia dell'arte, stuff as there's a link uh, between... Rokugo and Comedia dell'arte, they both started street performances, and were born in a Renaissance period of their respective countries, Japan for Rokugo and um, Italy for uh, Comedia dell'arte. Raku also shares some out here, so they um, both started street performances and they also both Japanese forms of theatre. Finally, have medieval theatre, which has uh, shares the religious origins of uh, Rukugo, Rukugo starting in Buddhist sermons, and medieval theatre having strong Christian links. Um, as a performer, this affects me in sort of way. I, as someone who enjoys telling jokes, and this really helped me in terms of thinking of how a joke is constructed, and the, the three-part structure of um, Rukugo jokes and thinking about what needs to go into each part of a joke to make it funny. And also how to use more than just my voice to tell a joke, joke to use props and actions and facial expressions and how I move um, at least the upper part of my body with Rukugo to make a better joke. And that's the sources and that's it. Thank you. Right, so it's about 16 and a half.